If you work in SEO, CRO, or other forms of web marketing, chances are things are going to get technical. And when things get technical, you have to look at your website's code. When you look at your website's code, it's really helpful if you understand what's going on in there. So with that in mind, let's talk about the programming languages you should know if you work in SEO or the technical side of web marketing. Broadly speaking, I would say there are five programming languages that you should know if you are getting into the technical side of web marketing. The first and most fundamental language you should understand is HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and this is the language that marks up your website's content. Every piece of text, image, video, whatever else it is in your website is marked up with a specific HTML tag. Now, you don't necessarily need to know every single HTML tag. You don't need to know how to build an HTML page from scratch. But what you should know and what you should be basically familiar with is how to work your way through an HTML page if you're looking at it. So if you view the source on your website and you're looking at all the HTML, you should have some sense of what's going on. You should know what the head is and how that's different than the body. You should be able to find some of the key tags, the title tag, the h1 tag, a tags, image tags, and so on. You should also be able to look at a piece of text and see how it's marked up. Is that piece of text in a p tag? Is that piece of text in an h tag? And what is the difference between those two? How would that be perceived differently by Googlebot if it's in a different tag? Now, another language that I would say is pretty fundamental to the technical side of web marketing is CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and this is the language you use to style your HTML document. CSS works by selecting certain elements from your HTML page and defining how those should be designed. So it might select all of your images and say that those images should have a border or there might be a CSS selector that selects all of your header tags and says that they should be a particular font or a particular color. Now, where this becomes really important is if you're trying to address things like mobile friendliness issues from Google. If Google says that you have a mobile friendliness issue because your fonts are too small, well, you wanna look at your CSS and you wanna understand what the font sizes are set to. Are they too small? Same would be true. If you have an issue with the tap targets being too close together, look at your CSS file and see how those are spaced apart. Is it enough to clear Google's mobile friendliness guidelines? I don't think you need to know all the CSS selectors, but you do need to be able to know enough when you look at a CSS file to have an idea of how the CSS selectors and what's being defined in the CSS file is affecting your page. Strictly speaking, HTML and CSS are not programming languages. They're markup languages. They're making some changes to how your text, your images, your content is marked up and presented on the page. A programming language implies some type of logic going on behind the scenes. So the first programming language that I think is important to know if you work in SEO or any other technical web marketing field is JavaScript. JavaScript does lots of different things. It can manipulate content on your page, so it can bring in new text, new images as people move through your web page. JavaScript can also bring in third-party scripts, it can bring in advertisements or analytics or tracking code on your page. JavaScript can also be used to animate things on your page, so it can move items around the page. You do not need to understand how to do all of those things in JavaScript. I don't even think you need to know how all the JavaScript code works if you happen to look at it. But you should be able to go through and see what JavaScript affects, what JavaScript scripts, what JavaScript code is affecting your HTML document, especially how that JavaScript code is affecting how your web page is rendered. Is Googlebot able to see all of your text, your images, and other content given how your JavaScript works? JavaScript is also really important to understand when you're trying to improve your website's speed. Now, JavaScript is what's known as a front-end programming language. Front-end because it's operating on the front-end of your website, in the browser, where people are looking at your website. In contrast to that, we have back-end programming languages. 
backend programming languages work on your website server and they execute on the server to generate the page that's ultimately sent over to the browser. Now there's a lot of different backend programming languages, but one of the more common ones that you'll come across is PHP. PHP is the backend programming language that runs among a lot of other platforms and applications. It runs WordPress. So if you are using WordPress, you might need to open up your WordPress templates to see what's going on in those WordPress templates. How are the pages being generated by WordPress before they're sent to the browser? And when you open up that WordPress template, all of that's going to be in PHP code. So you want to be familiar enough with PHP that if you're looking at it, you can basically follow what's going on. PHP and other backend programming languages work around different conditional statements. So if you open up a WordPress template, you're going to see things like if statements. If this condition is true, show the text this way. If this other condition is true, show the text this other way. So you want to start to understand some of those conditional statements and how they might be changing how your page is ultimately generated by WordPress. Now, when you're looking at that PHP document, all it's doing is generating the output, generating the HTML that will ultimately be sent to the browser. But when you look at that template, there's no text in there itself. There's no images. None of the information from the actual page is in the template. All that information about the page is in a database. So the last language that I think is important for you to understand is a database language called SQL or SQL. This stands for Structured Query Language. And what SQL allows you to do is query a database. So you can go to your database and you can query it and get different information out of the database. There's a lot else you can do with SQL as well. You can update tables, you can create tables, and you can decide how those tables are related to other tables of information. You don't need to worry about any of that. The most important thing you should worry about, and I would say the most important thing to learn about SQL, is how you select information from the database. And so when you write a select statement in SQL, you're defining certain criteria. For example, you might want to select all the pages in your database that don't have title tags. You might want to select all of the images in your database that don't have alt text. By selecting things like that, you can find problems on your website and you can figure out which pages those problems are on. So those are the five most important languages that I would say you should focus on learning if you want to get more into the technical side of web marketing and if you want to be able to diagnose problems that exist within your website's code. That's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and SQL. There's a sixth language I'll throw out here though, and that's Python. Python is not necessarily a web language. Python, however, is the language of machine learning and data science. And a lot of SEO work, CRO work, and other marketing work is really starting to overlap with machine learning and data analysis. So if you're doing a lot of complex analysis of data, you're starting to do a lot of machine learning, well, learning Python can really help you get better at that. As well, Python has some really great data analysis features that are way better than using Excel to manipulate and look at the different data that we all have to work with in marketing. So if you're trying to get more into that side of the world, that data analysis side, Python would certainly be something to check out. If you have any questions about any of these languages or need help deciding what you should learn to improve your tech marketing skills, please let me know. You can email me at matthew at elementive.com. If you liked this video and would like to see more like it from Elementive, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.